Warning, electrical shock hazard. Disconnect power before servicing. Replace all parts and panels before operating. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. Excessive weight hazard. Use two or more people to move and install dishwasher. Failure to do so can result in back or other injury. My name is Phil Lally. I'm the product service manager for Whirlpool for the dish category. And today we're going to cover the new installation of a new model line we've got out uh, that's going to launch in February of 2020. It's a new design dishwasher from the ground up. So there are some installation differences from what you used to in the past. Uh, we're going to cover a KDPM 804 model today. We'll cover some installation tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. One is there's a couple uh, boards in the shipping base and in the top. You might want to keep those and set those aside. We'll use them if we've got an unusual uh, cutout that's a little bit too wide. You can go ahead and tilt it on its back and remove the shipping base. And again, you might want to save these two strips of wood that's in the shipping base in case you need to use them as shims for the cabinet or if they've got a built up floor, you can use them as runners to even out the floor. Before you set it up, you want to adjust your rear legs to the proper height for the countertop. So measure from the floor to the underside. In this case, we've got 34 and a half. The dishwasher comes preset from the factory at 33 and a half. You want to adjust the rear legs out one inch before you slide it into the cutout because once you get it into the cutout, you can't uh, adjust the rear legs. Now you could do the fronts at this time, but we'd rather have you wait until you get it in there to adjust the front when you get to the portion where you're going to level it side to side and from front to rear. So at this time, once you've done the rear legs, you can set it up. So once you get it stood up and get ready to slide it in, you're going to route utilities kind of like an umbilical cord out the back. And you're going to route them through the bottom, rear, or right side, depending on where the sink is. And you've got the drain hose, the water supply, and the electrical. Now the hole that's required is only one and a half inches. And a lot of guys ask me, how do you get all this through a one and a half inch hole? You put the plug in first. And then you do the water supply. And lastly, you do your drain hose because you can squish it down to fit through the remainder of the hole. So we've got the utilities routed through that one and a half inch hole now. So you're going to start to slide it in to the cutout. As you're sliding it in, you also want to get the slack out of the water supply, drain hose, and power cord so they don't pinch up behind there. Also in a tight fitting cabinet, you can use a tool like this, some type of wedge, that as you're pushing it in, you don't want the blanket to bunch up. So you can push it in as you're sliding it in as well. We've also got a new feature where we have two anchor points now on each side of the blanket to anchor it to the tub. So when you do push it in, it doesn't bunch up. And just go a little bit at a time, pull the slack out, make sure the blanket's not bunching up on you. So right there's a good position. What we're going to do now is connect the anchors to anchor it to the countertop. Or we can also do a side anchor if you have a stone or marble countertop. Another improvement that we made for this model line is our top mount anchor points have always been in the same location and you can only put a screw in the wood so many times before it strips out. So we added two more slots. So if needed, you can move the anchors in or out to find fresh countertop. So once you get them in the slot, you just take a pair of pliers and bend the tabs or the ears on the back so the anchors are locked in. Now if you did have the option to side mount it, these anchors have two score marks. And depending if it's plastic or stainless tub, you score and break off the tab, for example right here, and you'd move that anchor to the side, which lines up 
with a hole so when you slide it in the side anchor the screw goes through the hole through this hole and into the side of the cabinet so once you get the anchors in there you can slide it into where it's flush you want to line it up with the cabinet doors or flush with the countertop and then now is the time where you want to adjust your front legs there's a couple options on the legs you can use a crescent wrench at the bottom of the leg or a seven millimeter allen wrench at the top of the leg there's a hole in the middle of it and you can turn it from the top or use a wrench from the bottom whatever you prefer so you just lift up on it until it's where you want it and you can just actually start it with your hand to get it close to where it's level and then from there you can use your seven millimeter allen wrench or a crescent wrench to adjust the legs to where it's level you can visually look at it make sure it looks good from the top and the sides and also you can use a level on it uh, from front to back you go there and side to side you can open the door and stick it right on the frame of the tub right here to level it side to side now even though you get it as level as you can with a level you always want to ask the customer if it looks okay to them before you anchor it because sometimes the countertops off or the cabinets are off and even though the dishwasher is level it may not look right so always ask the customer and you can adjust from there so once we've got it level like that front to back side to side flush with the cabinet doors flush with the countertop you want to lightly open the door then you want to take the two screws that came in the miscellaneous parts bag and anchor those right into the countertop now you've got three holes under here so you should be able to find a fresh okay once you've got those in there it's, it's anchored so when the customer opens and pulls the racks out with a load of dishes on it it doesn't tilt forward or move on them okay also in the video I referenced uh, during the unpacking portion that you might want to save the boards that come in the shipping base because you may use them uh, if you've got a built up floor or if you got an extra wide cabinet behind the fascia board and you're side mounting it these work great as shims for example on the side if you've got a wider than 24 inch cabinet cut out behind the fascia board there's nothing for the screw to bite into so you can actually use the boards to shim it out on both sides to 24 inches wide so when you slide the dishwasher in and you side anchor it the screw has something to bite into also on a built up floor in an older home if you put the dishwasher in it's going to drop down on you so you want to use these as shims rather than just cutting shims for the back actually use the full length cut them to measure slide it in so when you slide the dishwasher in it's nice even with the floor and you, get, you don't get that uh, gap at the top because it dropped down on you